right there. All right, so um, thank you everyone for coming today for the presentation today with Sondermine. Today we'll be speaking about drugs impacting society. And our speaker today is Dr. Lavelle Hendricks. Oh, okay. And a little bit about him. Oh, before we get started, also, I want to um, talk about some housekeeping. So this webinar will be recorded and we will send it to you via email once you, the email that you signed up. And we will send you the presentation deck in PDF form for your future reference. If you have any questions, just keep them in mind and we'll get to them at the end. And also, if you want to speak or post about the social, about the webinar on social media, we'd love for you to share, share it with the hashtag going there with Sondermine. So a little bit about today's speaker. Dr. Lavelle Hendricks is a professor at Texas A&M University Commerce, where he has served as a member of the Faculty Senate. He is a licensed chemical dependency counselor. He is also a member of the Commerce Independent School District Board of Trustees. He is also the associate editor of the Journal of Counseling and Addiction, along with being a past president of the Texas Council of Faculty Senate. Dr. Hendricks has published over 60 articles and he is, a, he is continually engaging and contributing in various aspects with his community. So I'll let you take it from here, Dr. Hendricks. Yes, thank you so much there. Uh... Uh, Maya, and uh, for those of you who are listening, I don't uh, see, yeah, go back to the other slide, please. I don't see uh, the uh, participants uh, list uh, yet, but I'm sure that you are uh, out there. I want to thank you, uh, Maya, for organizing this, and uh, Jolene there with uh, Sunder Mind. Thank you uh, so much for this privilege, this opportunity to uh, share uh, with all of you. Uh, we're going to touch base today on a subject that's very dear and personal to my heart uh, in the field of chemical. Uh, dependency. And it's always important to understand that when you do a webinar or you talk about issues of this nature, uh, a group is only a microcosm of society, as you know, which simply means that uh, sharing this information, uh, you may know someone uh, who's right now dealing with some type of addictive disorder, whether it's alcohol or drug. Uh, today's message is just entitled to be uh, educational, not therapeutic. But I strongly encourage you that if you are, you know, someone uh, who is wrestling uh, in the field of addictive disorders, uh, that you reach out to get them some type of help. I've always believed and will continue to stand on this, that reaching out to help is a strength. It is not a weakness, but it is a strength uh, to reach out uh, for some type of help. So with that being said, I'd like to share with you uh, my research that I've done, uh, I guess, over the last uh, 20 years in the field of addictive uh, disorder. In particular, today, we'll be looking at uh, some of the latest drugs uh, that are out there. Next slide, please. We'll look at uh, uh, three things uh, today. First and foremost, we want to look at the uh, historical development of the uh, synthetic uh, drug that is called uh, K2, and I'll further explain uh, why it's called K2 later on. Then we'll look at the uh, historical development of uh, bath uh, salts that are out there. Uh, we'll talk about e -cig. and of course, more importantly, I always like to share with uh, those that are listening uh, the signs and symptoms associated with these uh, uses, more importantly, also the therapy that uh, is available uh, for you. Now, some, some quick facts, and I know that uh, Maya did uh, point out that if you have any type of uh, questions, uh, you can place those uh, there in the uh, Q&A box. And when we finish with the presentation, I'll be more than happy uh, to uh, go back over and answer some things for you. Uh, please keep in mind, we are compressing uh, about 20 years of experience uh, down into about 45 uh, minutes. And we're also taking about 15 weeks of lecture that I normally will do with my students and putting it into uh, 45 minutes as well. But for the most part, you got this drug out there uh, that is called uh, K2. Uh, K2 is a synthetic a uh, form of marijuana and contrary uh, to the beliefs and the thoughts of individuals that somehow this is a safe alternative uh, to regular marijuana use, it's not. Uh, we know that the active ingredient that is found in marijuana uh, is THC, which is a, a Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinoid, which is found in marijuana. 
but as it stands uh, today, it is totally illegal, contrary to popular views, popular thoughts, and people feel as though that they can go out and uh, use uh, K2. It is illegal to use it. I do know that other states, currently 13 states, have legalized the use of marijuana either for recreational or medicinal purposes, depending on what state that you're in. I'm from Texas, uh, so uh, K2 and the use of marijuana uh, is not uh, legal. Uh, you'll find that for the most part, uh, when K2 arrived on the scene, uh, there's so many different uh, names you can see on the screen, skunk and knockoff and so forth, and they call it knockoff weed. Uh, right now, it's probably about over a thousand uh, different names out there that they actually uh, use for this particular product. Uh, you can find it in uh, most tobacco shops. Again, even though it's illegal, there are some people who will uh, violate the law in a sense to sell this. I've spoken to multiple uh, city council areas in the area where I'm located uh, from Dallas all the way to uh, Texarkana, Texas, and going east towards uh, Longview and Marshall, going up north uh, towards a town called Paris, Texas. Uh, going into the uh, Mansfield area, speaking to uh, school boards. I've had several uh, business owners tell me that for the most part, during these quote unquote tough economic times, if people want to buy, that they're willing to uh, sell it. But it's late illegal uh, in the uh, state of Texas. Uh, the K2 that is out there today, we know that for the most part, uh, it is about three to five times more potent than the THC that's found in regular marijuana. And I'll explain further when we get into looking at the pictures of this product. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, some quick facts uh, uh, regarding this product and from a longitudinal standpoint. And as you know, uh, longitudinal is uh, an extended period of time. But from what we have learned uh, since its arrival uh, on the scene, uh, we know that this product will uh, cause an individual to have increase uh, heart rates. We know that this particular product will cause an individual to have diarrhea, will have an individual to call uh, memory loss. We do know that kidney failure is associated with this product. And again, I stress because we do know that the active ingredient THC that's found in regular marijuana, we know how long that that product has been around with the use of K2. And because it is a synthetic drug, and as many of you know, synthetic simply means it is made in a laboratory. It's made by men and women in a lab, and because it is a synthetic drug from a longitudinal standpoint, we're not sure what this particular product uh, will do to individuals over the next 20, 30, uh, 40 uh, years. We do know that this product, again, causes severe agitation, memory loss, vomiting, diarrhea, and so forth. But these are only the symptoms of this particular product uh, that we have seen uh, since we've been dealing with it. There's a wonderful book out there entitled, It's Not K2, But Y2K, it was written by some guy named Lavelle Hendricks. I encourage you, if you'd like to get a copy of that book, or if some of you are interested in having one, I'd be more than happy to, uh, uh, to send you that. Uh, to show you how this product is actually uh, sold, it's sold in what we call grams. And to understand what a gram is, for those of you, when you go to a restaurant or when you are enjoying uh, tea or coffee uh, in your own home, and sometimes you get those little uh, pink packages, uh, that's about uh, a gram itself. So, if you want to surmise what a what three uh, grams actually looks like, it is about that amount of, of the uh, K2 that's sold uh, in a package. Uh, the screen says it's 20 to 60 uh, dollars that this stuff is sell. We know that some individuals will also uh, use not off versions of it, and they'll try to get it down to 10 dollars. And some people will try to get this stuff as well as 65, 70, uh, 75 dollars. But the thing to remember again that it's totally illegal in the state of Texas where I'm located. And because I don't know where many of you are from, I can't comment on that, but I do know that it's totally uh, illegal to consume this product, to deliver this product, or even to possess this product. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the beautiful thing about uh, uh, the use of uh, K2 and uh, the information is that how all of this evolved. Uh, there was a, there's a chemist professor at Clemson University, and, and I know that Jolene made comment that she's recording this, so. I'll give you the short version of it, but you can read the narrative later on. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, John W. Huffman, a chemist at uh, Clemson University, wanted to experiment with this synthetic form of uh, marijuana, and he injected uh, rats with it. And what he found, for the most part, that when he injected THC, uh, which is the active ingredient in marijuana, 
in the rats, they got under the wheel and they kind of spun around, they kind of spun around, they kind of spun around. Well, when they use the synthetic form of, uh, of uh, this marijuana, injected, they put them on the wheel, they kept going, they kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, and then finally they kept going and then they died of uh, cardiac arrest. And you will notice that for the most part, the uh, active ingredient in uh, K2 is JHW.08. That simply means those are his initials, John Wayne Huffman.018, which is the active chemical uh, that is found in this particular product. What Dr. Huffman basically decided that this product was deadly, he's been quoted repeatedly as saying, people who use this product, it is akin to playing Russian roulette with your life. We know that the military, United States military, was the first uh, to basically ban the use of uh, uh, synthetic marijuana on its basis. We know folks in Europe also said that they wanted to get rid of this product as well. So it is illegal to possess, to use, and to, and to distribute this particular a product. Other countries around uh, have taken different stances on it. Next slide, please. Now, this is an actual uh, picture of how K2, uh, uh, how it looks. You'll see over there it says K2 Summit. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, this particular product is the olive color uh, that is there. And uh, they, they named it K2 because this product is actually now, uh, because it's illegal to possess this product, uh, K2 is the highest mountain uh, in Asia, and a lot of this uh, K2, the synthetic marijuana, is actually being produced there. So that's how it got its name, K2, because it's the second highest mountain that's located uh, there in, uh, in the area of Asia. So you can see the uh, product there, and uh, individuals uh, will take this product, and they will smoke it, they will snort it, or they will ingest it into their uh, system. Uh, surprisingly enough, I had tons of uh, K2. I mean, tons of that stuff, because I'd go to schools and some individuals uh, have never seen this product, and I had it in my lab here at Texas a and University Commerce, and I would take it with me and show it to individuals. Well, keep in mind now, I was asked by State Senator uh, John Whitmer out of Houston and a couple of state senators here in the uh, Texas area, the North Texas area, excuse me, to come and testify before the uh, Texas Senate about the use of this uh, product. And I gave my testimony that I don't think that this product should be uh, legal. There were folks at the uh, uh, tobacco industry that also gave their testimony and they brought in their experts and they counted my arguments, but thankfully they did decide that they would make this product illegal. But I strongly encouraged them uh, that we should make not only K2, K3, K5, K6, K7 illegal because from a seventh grade science standpoint, and many of you understand this, all it takes is the changing of one molecule and all of a sudden it goes from K2 to K3 to K5. Again, this stuff, K2, is about three to five times more potent than regular marijuana. We got some stuff out there now, it's called K99. It's about 1,500 uh, percentage points higher than the active ingredient THC that's found in regular uh, marijuana. The beautiful thing about it is when this product arrived, it was there on the uh, East Coast in, uh, in New York and it came across the country got there in, in Jersey, uh, got there in the Midwest part of the country, uh, there in Missouri, got, uh, for some reason, it skipped over Oklahoma and it landed in the nation of Texas. And when we've been dealing with this uh, uh, product ever since, but that's how uh, the product itself uh, uh, looks. Next slide, please. Uh, now, the, the, the thing about K2 is that for the most part, uh, when this product is actually uh, used, it's sold in about three grams. Again, if you go back to the uh, sweet and low package and so forth, what they'll do is uh, they will put it inside of tobacco, uh, cigarette paper, uh, they will roll it, and they will smoke it. Interesting thing about it, and the reason I know a lot of this information also is because I have two good friends of mine uh, who work for uh, DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration for the United States, and anytime there is a new arrival uh, of a drug, uh, they'll normally contact me, ask me, have I heard anything about this particular drug? And uh, if I haven't, then I will do some research on it or they'll apprise me of it. And as you know, as a university professor, we're always required to uh, write articles on things. So I like to keep the public informed. I share it with you, I go to school uh, boards, I go to uh, city councils, I'll go to any organization, civic clubs, Kiwanis Club, uh, fraternities, sororities, any group that is willing to listen to me. I'll go to church groups to talk with them as well. But for the most part, you'll see that uh, it's sold in grams, uh, for the most part, you'll know that the 
the withdrawals are similar to that of the use of uh, marijuana. And some people even talk about the uh, CBD oil and how it could be used. Keep in mind that the, in, in the simplified version of it is the uh, O1 uh, rector will attach itself to the uh, small and large intestines. And then the O2 will attach itself to the brain cells. And that's why people, when they use even the CBD oil and so forth, they'll get loopy and they'll get crazy. And, and they'll still have the same effect that marijuana will give an individual that they want to eat a lot. You'll notice that one of the things on there, the withdrawal, is about suicide. Uh, Senator Glassley from Iowa introduced federal legislation because there were two, no, excuse me, there were three 15 year olds uh, smoking uh, K2 using this product. One individual went home, took his grandfather's uh, uh, shotgun, and uh, committed suicide. And so, for the most part, he introduced legislation, legislation that basically said, we need to get this product out of the hands. I think the last research I showed that in Texas, uh, 33, 33% of the consumers of K2 are individuals between the ages of nine and 15. 33%, that's a third. Those are frightening statistics that are going on out there. So these drugs cause suicide, depression, hallucination, and so forth. Next slide, please. Uh, these are just some of the uh, smoking uh, devices uh, that you can uh, purchase. Uh, you'll see the bong on my screen is on the right-hand side. Uh, I was aware of an incident. I was called to a, uh, a local police department in another city where an, an individual had made a bong, and you can make those things over in ceramics and so forth. And uh, the bong was about eight feet tall. And to understand that, that's pretty much two feet from the ceiling in most bedrooms and most of your homes. So they made one of these bongs that was eight feet tall, and it had uh, about uh, 60 pipes on it, 60 pipes on it. What they would do, they would take about 50 pounds of this stuff. And to understand what 50 pounds is, it's the equivalent about, for those of you in the uh, agricultural uh, area, like where I'm located here in East Texas, it's like a square bale of hay. That's about 50 pounds. And they would put that inside of the uh, bong itself. They would charge individuals uh, about $60 uh, to come and to inhale uh, this particular product. And of course, it's totally illegal. And so the bong is currently on display in one of the local uh, police departments. But those are some of the advice, some of the devices uh, that they use. One of the things they're doing now also, if you know what an isolating fan is, you know, sometimes in Big Mama's house, they have those fans that kind of rotate around back and forth. Well, in one city, they have what's called isolation parties. Well, they'll take about five to 10 pounds of the uh, uh, K2, and they'll put it on an ashtray, and once they fire it up, and then they'll put that isolating fan on it, and what it does, it just fills the entire room uh, with this product, and individuals there are uh, inhaling it. They call that the isolation uh, 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 K2 uh, party. But again, it's totally illegal to have these products. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the treatment that we use for uh, K2, uh, of course, is detox. One of the things I use a lot is uh, CBT, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, which is the bottom line, you think irrationally, you're gonna behave irrationally. And I always caution uh, counselors and so forth, uh, be careful about the use of, uh, uh, of reality therapy. And for those who know Ad, uh, Adler and William Glass's theory on reality therapy, therapy is about choice, you know, telling someone who is using this product that you got a choice to use, and they say, oh, I can go out and use it. Well, of course they wanna use, they're gonna choose to go out and use it. So be very careful. Motivational interviewing is another one that we use uh, in this field as well. For those of you familiar with the 12-step uh, uh, programs, I, I have several 12-step uh, programs that we do here uh, at the university. We have uh, one for alcohol, one for drugs, one for uh, crystal meth. In my area here, uh, meth is a, is a product that individuals are using. For those of you familiar with meth, uh, you know that for the most part, it has the uh, the sertic acid in it, these are things that for the most part that is found in batteries. And you'll see all these pores that are on individuals' faces and so forth. And the reason why is that because the acid is trying uh, to get out. You'll also know the uh, yelling of people that are using uh, this meth product as well. But for the most part, 12-step programs, it came to acknowledge that there was a, a God, there was a higher power out there that I came to realize that I couldn't do this uh, by myself. Uh, trigger awareness, uh, I can show you through uh, my lab here at the university, I can take you to individuals that have been off of K2 for maybe one or two years. I can show you pictures of their brain, 
how you can see a picture of K2 and the brain just completely uh, light up. That cerebral cortex, which is the frontal lobe part of your brain, for the most part, it, it will just basically put a person in a, a tizzy. And of course, our recovery programs. And one of the things we're also finding is those that work in the field of drug and alcohol addiction, I was very fortunate enough to serve on the state board that licensed uh, chemical dependency counselors, and we developed peer uh, support group meetings. So even the counselors themselves who were in recovery but relapsed, we put a, pr a provision, a plan in place uh, to help those individuals as well. So that's part of the uh, recovery program that we have. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, the simplified version is, and I don't recommend this, but you can Google all this stuff. This information is really available as well. Uh, Acetone, uh, you get you some Everclear, uh, you get your little spray bottle there at uh, Walmart, or you can go to Dollar General store for 99 cents, and you get 500 milligrams. You can order this stuff uh, online. Keep in mind, every computer has identification number. And when you order that stuff from Asia, or you ordered it from Europe, or you ordered it from Black Market, Keep in mind that your computer has an ID number on it. And as soon as that stuff comes either to your post office box or it comes to your personal address, you can expect a knock on your door from a DEA official because it's totally illegal to purchase, to consume, to deliver, or possess this particular product. The individuals feel as though they can beat the system, but you can't. Next slide, please. Uh, herbal substances, you'll see on the package, they're in microscopic size, maybe four font. It will say uh, not designed for human consumption. They'll say on the product that it's aroma uh, therapy. I assure you there's nothing safe about this uh, particular uh, product. Next slide, please. And again, I told you about the different uh, types of names that are out there. You know, K2 Apple Bay, K2 Granny, uh, K2 uh, Free Summit. All these different names are out there. These are just street names associated with this product. And last time I checked, I have a research assistant that works with me. We got over a thousand different names that are out there for this uh, particular product. But those are just some of the ones that you can see right there. Okay, next slide, please. And of course, all the different markets where you can buy this stuff, which is totally illegal and so forth. Okay, next slide. And then of course, we come to a second uh, form of synthetic drug use, this stuff called bath salts. And I grew up with uh, four older uh, sisters and myself. And I, I know sometimes how uh, my sisters would like to put, you know, the stuff in the water and soak there for hours upon a time. Well, this is not the stuff that we're talking about here. This particular product that we're talking about here is very dangerous. And I'll show you some of them. Next slide, please. Uh, you don't want to bathe with this stuff. What this stuff here is, it is synthetic cocaine. It is synthetic cocaine. There is nothing safe about this particular product. You'll notice there on the slide on the right-hand side where it says uh, bath salt, you see those uh, different lines. Anybody who's familiar with the uh, use of cocaine and how you'll cut cocaine up with a razor and so forth, and then you'll line it up, and then you'll use either a dollar bill. You can see the top right corner on the mirror, the dollar bill there, or they'll use a straw. I was working with one of my colleagues down in Austin, uh, Texas, and there were some individuals who were actually uh, using a, uh, a dollar bill. Well, because they were lining their nose with this particular product, and because it tears the uh, uh, membrane, the blood membranes inside of the nose, one individual was HIV positive, and because they were all using the same dollar bill, then all three of those individuals became HIV positive because they were sharing uh, the same product, they were sharing that same straw, and they all became positive. But for the most part, individuals use this stuff. When they market this stuff, you notice the beautiful colors that they use, you know, your, your, your pink, your, your purple, uh, your, your, your green. It is designed to uh, market uh, to individuals, and they come in those different uh, vials there, and people try to purchase that stuff. But again, there is absolutely nothing safe about this product. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, the way this stuff really came about is MDPP, uh, this stuff originated back in the early 40s, 50s. This stuff is not new. It's been around for a long time. Uh, the military uh, basically used it uh, to keep pilots uh, alert. And as a result, they also used it to deal with individuals who are suffering from you know, chronic uh, fatigue, having that very lethargic feeling about themselves. So they would uh, give them this product. And of course, it put them on cloud nine. It gave them 
a high. It was similar to what we call lysergic acid, diethylamide, or LSD. But again, there's absolutely nothing safe uh, about the use of this product as well. Next slide, please. Uh, again, I always want to give you street names uh, for these products because you might hear the, the street name and, and not know uh, what it is. You know, vanilla sky, white does, purple, uh, haze, white girl, and so forth. All of these names that are out there, I think at last count, I think it was like 637 uh, names for this one. Again, let me stress the importance of this. This is synthetic uh, cocaine. Uh, it is nothing safe about using this product, even though it's called bath salt. This is not something that you place in the tub with you. This particular product uh, is deadly, and this particular product can also take your life. Next slide, please. And how this product is actually uh, being used, uh, again, uh, you, you can snort it, you, you can smoke it, or you inject it. Uh, one of the things I told you a few minutes ago that I worked with uh, uh, DEA officials, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, people will also take a syringe and they'll place mayonnaise, mayonnaise that you buy at uh, your local eating, it's managed you buy at Walmart or Brookshire's or whatever you shop, and they put mayonnaise inside of a syringe, and they'll also inject themselves uh, with that product. And then as a side note, surprisingly enough, one of the fastest growing uh, legal uh, products that we're now trying to, manu trying to regulate on the shelf uh, in this area uh, is something called Listerine. Uh, people will drink Listerine uh, straight because of the alcohol content in it. And it's very cheap. You can go to one of the local establishments and buy this stuff for six and nine, seventy-nine cents uh, each. And so they're actually using this product as well. But with this cocaine stuff, they inject the stuff, they smoke it, or they will uh, snort it. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, again, what it does to the body. Uh, the interesting thing about it, uh, the, the, the paranoia. Um, you you can also Google uh, this. How it basically uh, puts your body completely uh, on fire. There was a case in uh, Atlanta where uh, one guy was cannibalizing uh, the face of another guy. And uh, I know some folks at CNN and they call and ask what my view was on it and what is this bad salt? Why is it causing those individuals? And I said to them at the, at the offset that I do not believe that the individual was using uh, bath salt. I said, when the toxicology report come back, it's going to show something different. And when it came back, it lined it with what I said. It came back to the use of K2. Reason why? Again, because if you know anything about K2 and you know anything about marijuana, it gives you the munchies. But this stuff here, this bad salt, it will electrify uh, your body. It will take you back down uh, to your birthday suit. You, you will see that for the most part, uh, I've known individuals who've just destroyed hotel rooms. I, I know of an individual that was actually using uh, this particular product, so when I say young person, this individual was in his 20s and the police came out there and he started running. And when they got closer to him, because the uh, product, this, this synthetic cocaine, because it was in these little plastic bags, he swallowed two or three of them. But what happened was the plastic lodged in his lungs and because he had been running, the heart of course kept beating, kept beating, and his chest kind of exploded because the plastic got lodged in his lungs. And of course, at 20 plus years of age, he died there on the spot. This product, of course, will cause your, your blood pressure to accelerate, give you these suicide uh, tendencies as well. This product, again, it will give you a tremendous amount of strength. I mean, you will get so strong uh, using this product that there was a case down in Florida uh, where they had a guy in uh, handcuffs and he basically just pulled them completely apart. They put him in the back seat of the police car and he used his teeth to tear the uh, vinyl off the seat and start eating the wire uh, out of the uh, seat as well. So again, this product doesn't do people any good at all because I said it gives you a high electricity, a high energy. Uh, there was one guy who had been using this product, uh, ran onto a, uh, a, a used uh, car dealership or pre-owned, I think that's from they use now, pre-owned uh, dealership, got up there in his birthday suit, jumped on the hood and he started hollering, you know, what have you done for me lately? Well, there's nothing safe about using this particular uh, product. Next slide, please. Uh, again, uh, treatment, uh, detox uh, unit, uh, inpatient uh, treatment uh, facility as well, uh, recovery groups, uh, sober living. Uh, we do know that for the most part, here in the United States, here in the United States, we comprise about four or 5%, depending on where you look at it, 
about 5% of the world's population lives in the United States, 5%. But 65% of all illegal drug use are found among Americans. I guess it's basic capitalism. It's supply and demand. If, we, if they demand it, someone is going to supply it for us. But you can see all the support group meetings and so forth that can provide help for them as well. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. These are the current drugs uh, that are out there. Uh, one of the drugs uh, out there uh, is called uh, 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 huffing. Uh, and basically, what they'll do, they'll take an aerosol can and they'll spray it on the inside. But you can see all the drugs that are out there, the heroin used, the inhalants. Uh, the inhalants deal with how people are sniffing uh, gasoline, especially this time of the year when young people out there mowing car yards and so forth, they'll go get a gallon of gasoline and the aroma that comes from it, they're huffing that stuff down. Steroids, uh, we know that the, the steroid use and how people are doing those things, uh, we're knowing that in some women that will use uh, steroids, they'll cause them to have a mustache or start growing a beard. And uh, for some guys that are using uh, steroids and so forth, it'll, um, how do I say this? It'll cause your uh, little willy uh, not to work. So the bottom line is you, you want to stay away from these, uh, these products. Next slide, please. Uh, the, the dust thing, uh, again, you can buy this at one of your local stores, 99 cents, dollar can, what they do, they basically huff uh, this stuff. All that stuff is really designed to clean your, your keyboards off or your computer, but people are, are using this product as well. Next one, please. Uh, Liquido, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with uh, Liquido, you see that Visine uh, there on the left uh, side of your screen, and you can see the heroin. Uh, you can date yourself. Uh, back in the day, uh, that little container at the top, uh, uh, when you had an ear infection, uh, Big Mama used to take some, some of that product and put it inside of your ear and put a, put a cotton or something in there to help with the uh, ear infection. What they do now is uh, they actually take the uh, liquid heroin because it looks the same darkish color as the medical product that they use for the uh, hearing issues. But now they'll put it in there, and what they'll do is they'll take that product to school and give or take about five or six dollars. Uh, they'll sell a drop that they actually put it on their tongue. The interesting thing about on the left hand side, the uh, the Visine container, they'll also take the uh, liquid O. Of course, they'll take the uh, Visine, they'll take it completely out, and they'll put the liquid O inside of that, and then they'll take a capsule of uh, Clorox or bleach, and it will basically take the coloring away. And these kids will take these products to school or people will take them to work with them. And they think that it's actually Visine, but it's not. It is the liquid oil. Again, they'll use it to put a, a drop or so uh, on their tongues. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, one of them, the, the deadly drug that is out there today uh, is something that's called uh, crocodile. Um, and, 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 and it's called crocodile because it takes on the texture of a product, of a, uh, of a crocodile. This, in my view, is the most horrendous drug that has ever been manufactured. Um, I can't give true diligence and justice to this, but I will say it to you this way. Once you inject your body with this particular drug, because it has different types of ingredients in it, has they use battery acid in it, they use uh, uh, different types of, of other products, and it eats the flesh from, oh, I guess my screen jumped ahead of me. I'm sorry, Dan. Uh, Ms. Maya, I guess, I don't know what happened, but that's okay. Uh, with this one right here, for the most part, it eats the flesh from the uh, inside out, and you don't want to fool uh, with this product. Next slide, please. Uh, now we come to e-cigs. Uh, there is nothing safe about e-cigarette use, period. We do know that in the United States, 400,000 uh, Americans die every year from tobacco-related illnesses. 400,000 die every year. And for every one death that we have, another 1,000 are diagnosed with a tobacco-related illness. There's absolutely nothing that is safe uh, about using uh, this particular product. Again, keep in mind, this product has been around since, I think, around 1915, uh, 1920. It didn't really make its way onto the scene again until people like myself start advocating the non-use of tobacco products. And so they brought in these e-cigs 
And because it vapes away or it vaporizes, people think that it is safe. There's nothing safe about this particular product. Next slide, please. Uh, and again, you see how it's made. You put a little battery in it and uh, you have your itemizer there and it basically gives a charge uh, to the product. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it just vapes out. Next slide, please. Uh, why people smoke it? Because uh, again, because they were told they can't use uh, conventional uh, cigarettes. And uh, they also believe that somehow uh, that it'll help them uh, quit their uh, smoking. I, I teach a tobacco sensation course and uh, basically trying to wean individuals off of this. Now keep in mind, all of the smoke that you see there is being emitted into the air. We do know that there are at least 48 known carcinogens, 48 known cancer causing agents that are actually found in uh, tobacco smoke. One of them is the akin to formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is one of the products that also used when people want to do their nails and harden their nails and so forth. Formaldehyde is also used uh, as an embalming ingredient when individuals die. Another carcinogen that's found in tobacco product is uh, uh, rat poison, things that we use uh, to uh, get rid of rodents and rats and roaches and things of that nature. So again, nothing safe about uh, e-cigs as well. I was at one of the local eating, not eating, at one of the local uh, grocery store and, and a lady was there using an e-cig and of course I contacted the uh, manager and said, you know, that shouldn't be going on. Of course the manager uh, basically said, no, you can't use that product here. Smoking is very personal to me. Uh, my oldest sister uh, died uh, from lung cancer. She started smoking when she was 15 years of age and I knew something was wrong with it when she started developing, you know, what's called the smoker's cough, you know, the <coughs> well, then she went to the hospital, found out that she had uh, uh, lung cancer, and then she was gone in two weeks once they found out. So again, nothing safe about using any type of tobacco product. Next slide, please. And of course, one of the things that people that use e-sync inside of your pupil there, you'll notice that the blood vessels will start burst. Now, keep in mind, everyone who has a red eye, do not associate that that person is using e sync Sometimes people have... Uh, uh, irritants. Sometimes there are allergies that are out there that will cause individuals to have a red eye. But we do know that people who do use this product, uh, because it's in such close proximity to the, the, the smoke itself, to the brain, that one of the things that attacks first will be your, uh, your eyes. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, this is how the product uh, is uh, made. Uh, the uh, antifreeze that you put in radiator in your vehicle and uh, propylene glycol, which is another ingredient that they use with uh, cat litter and some of this other stuff. These are the products that individuals are actually uh, putting in their bodies. That's why uh, most of us in this line of work we call licensed chemical dependency counselors because the emphasis is on chemical, trying to remind individuals of the chemicals that they're putting in their bodies. Okay. Next slide, please, thank you. And these are the different flavors that are out there. Oh, gummy bear. And again, because people think that these, these names, these childish names, gummy bear or, or purple, uh, rain and things like that. Uh, and, and they're trying to also market this product towards a younger uh, generation because kids think when they hear gummy bears, they think, oh, it's a safe product to use. Again, nothing safe about all these different flavors that they're using in these uh, uh, e-cigarettes. Next slide, please. And of course, are e-cigarettes better? No, it's nothing safe uh, about them. Uh, there was a case in Louisiana, I think about four or five years ago, where uh, they had an oil spill uh, off the coast and individuals were going there, scooping up some of the oil. And what they were doing, they would take a, a cigarette and they would dip it inside the oil, take it back home, freeze it, and then they would start smoking that conventional cigarette because they're getting a double high off of the oil and off of the tobacco. They call those three plus three because they're about six inches in length. Again, nothing safe about tobacco products. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, again, the FDA has stepped in and basically said, we need to do away with these. Next slide, please. And of course, uh, the most important thing to do is uh, to educate the public uh, about the ill effects associated with using either uh, conventional cigarettes or using the uh, e-cigs as well. I do know that people are still using e-cigs around, but again, there's nothing uh, safe uh, about the use of this product. What I'll do now, uh, Maya, I, I will yield to any questions that have come in so I can utilize the rest of my time with that.
Do you hear me, Maya? Yes, I had a little trouble trying to unmute the um, okay, the mic. <laughs> right. So the first question is, with the country being on lockdown, is there a growth or increase among individuals using illegal substances? Uh, I, I do know I spoke with one of the judges uh, in the area where I'm at, and, and not only has there been an increase in the use of illegal products, because most individuals know that uh, uh, point in case, my registration went out on my vehicle. And as a result of my registration going out, I couldn't go get a uh, new registration because the place is shut down right now so because of COVID-19. So the police departments have sent word out that for the most part, if your registration's gone out, your license is expired, we, we, during this time, we're going to uh, be flexible and not do a, a lot of ticket issuing. Well, people caught wind of that. And as a result of that, they are now out there purchasing a lot of illegal products. They are using these illegal products. And not only are they using these illegal products, based upon the information I have in the area where I'm at, there is also a increase in both domestic violence and child abuse as well, because people are at home, they're using these products, and they're abusing their spouse or their partner, and they're also abusing children. So to answer the question, yes, there has been a significant increase. Okay, thank you. And we have two other questions. Um, the next one is, why do you consider all tobacco products not safe? Isn't it natural? Okay. Yeah, you know, keep in mind, I, I, this is my line of work that I'm in. So if it seems as though it's coming from a bias or a slanted uh, viewpoint, I, I've seen the ill effects associated with tobacco use. I do know that 400,000 Americans die every year from tobacco-related illnesses. For every one death that occurs, another 1,000 tobacco-related illnesses are being here in the United States. So my point to that is I travel with my students sometimes to different countries around the world, in particular, I take them over to Costa Rica. If Costa Rica had the problem that the United States uh, has when it comes to tobacco-related uh, products, the country would go extinct within five years because it only has a population of about 5 million people. It's about the size of the state of uh, New Jersey. I also know that secondhand smoke, for those of us who don't smoke and people who don't indulge in the use of these tobacco products, it is more deadly. Secondhand smoke is more deadly because individuals who have smoked for a period of time, they build up uh, uh, some degree of resistance in their system. For those who don't smoke, and it causes more harm and damage to us. I, I respect the right of an individual, existentially speaking, to choose to do what he or she wants to do. It is my view to educate people of the ill effects associated with using uh, tobacco-related uh, products. Is it a natural product? Yes, it is a natural product. Did the tobacco industry know back in the 40s and 50s? Yes, if you read the uh, story about the history of the Marlboro Man, that when he went out there and was talking about that, and of course, uh, he passed away as well, it'd be the first to say that he was not informed of the ill effects associated with using uh, this product as well. So those that choose to smoke, uh, I'm not saying you can't smoke. I'm just educating the public of the ill effects associated with those who do smoke and what it could possibly do to those of us who don't smoke. Thank you, Dr. Hendricks. I have one more question from um, Vanessa. What are some healthy alternatives to quit smoking, to quit smoking, refrain from relapsing on substances that you found to be effective? Good. A uh, couple of things on the uh, quitting of tobacco products. Uh, the, the, the short version of this, of all the addictive disorders that are out there, the toughest one to get rid of is smoking. Uh, inside of your brain, you have what's called neurotransmitters. Those are your communication wavelengths that go back and forth. And when a person is not dealing with any type of illegal substance, and I'm giving you the simplified version, this is not at work, but this is a simplified version. Neurotransmitter A says to B, what's going on over there? And B says back to A, hey, I'm doing okay. And C says, is everything okay over there? B says, yeah, we're just chilling, having a good time. That's when there are no foreign substance injected into the body. When you inject a foreign substance into the body, 
what happens with those neurotransmitters <clears throat> inside of your brain, and give or take, uh, your brain weighs about three to five pounds inside of your, your noggin. This whole thing's about five to seven pounds. But anyway, what happens is once a foreign substance goes inside, now all of a sudden the brain gets hijacked. And as a result of getting hijacked, A says to B now, what's going on? B says to A, shut up. And C says, why are you guys arguing? And A says, well, mind your own business. Well, that's the simplified version of it because now the brain is getting, the brain has gotten hijacked. The brain is out of what we call homostasis. It's out of balance. So as a result of that, now it keeps craving, it keeps craving. I said to you that nicotine addiction is the toughest one. People can quit eating, they're addicted to, to chocolate, quit eating, they're addicted to, to food, quit eating, they're addicted to drinking alcohol. But it's something about smoking that that neurotransmitter is like a periscope. It stays up, always looking for the next sniff. So what I do with my tobacco sensation programs, and thank you, uh, Vanessa, for asking this question, I normally will say to the individual, share with me uh, your desire to quit. Yeah, I want to quit. Share with me how much you're smoking right now. And the individual say, you know, I smoke uh, uh, about uh, two packs a day, uh, about 40 uh, cigarettes. And I will say to them, what would happen for the most part if for the next week you only smoke 30 cigarettes? Well, they said, what do you mean 30? I said, well, what, what would happen if you just only smoke uh, 30? Why don't you try that uh, for about a week? Come back, let's talk about it. And they'll come back a week later and say, well, how did you do with uh, cutting down to 30? Hey, I was okay. Uh, it worked out well. Well, what if we cut it down to 20? Are you willing to try that for the next two weeks? You see what I'm doing? I'm reducing the use of the tobacco product. Some individuals, it worked exceptionally well. But keep in mind, 80% of people will relapse within 21 days. When it comes to tobacco use, because people don't like how they start looking, we know that sometimes when people quit using tobacco products, they'll also begin to put on weight. They don't like how they look. So, and then they get around triggers. Triggers are, they can smell it. If you go inside of a house or you go inside of a place where individuals smoke, you can see the yellow tint that is on the walls. A smoker can pick up that nicotine scent and want to start smoking again. Uh, it is a difficult, difficult, difficult addiction, but that's not to say that an individual who wants help, that it cannot uh, uh, be provided for them. Thank you, Dr. Hendricks. I have another question from um, Mary. With your past history partnering with the government officials and police departments, why isn't there an increase of laws bearing substances? And to piggyback off of that question, what is implemented to help those struggling with addiction? Uh, the laws. Um, the simplified version of it is this. Remember I said to you I was asked to come testify before the Texas uh, Senate. Well, when I gave my testimony, uh, there were others who were in favor of the use of uh, K2, the convenience store administration, because people are coming in and they're not just buying K2, they're buying other products. So they gave their side of it. Uh, one thing I have found uh, is sometimes the, um, uh, the squeaky wheel will get the oil, which means that for the most part, if you know influential people that uh, implement and pass laws that can work in your favor, that's how things are. I can present all the, the data that is out there regarding this, but ultimately it's up to those folks down in Austin who are going to implement or decide what the laws are going to be. Now, uh, are there relapse prevention programs? I shared with you uh, that there are peer support group meetings out there. Uh, we have several of them. Uh, available here uh, at the uh, university. I've taken it upon myself because I live in a rural area. I don't live in a, a big city. And we know that there are a lot of services in the big cities that are not readily available in the rural area. So I try to take uh, my service and what I can do to help individuals uh, with their type of uh, addiction that they're dealing with. So there are programs that are out there. And uh, uh, Ms. Maya, I don't mind you giving my uh, email address uh, to everyone. I'd be more than happy to send you tons of information if you work in this field, if you need someone to come speak, I'd be happy to do that for you as well. I'd even be happy to give you my office uh, number right now. Uh, if, if that's okay, Ms. Maya, to get my office number? I can send, I can send the information okay, sure. to everyone. Okay, that'd be fine. 
So yeah, love to do that for you. All right, thanks. And we have another question. Oops. And this one is from an is an anonymous attendee. As a person struggling with addiction to vaping, and I don't see myself stopping, how can I safely use it? Please tell me if the possible long term effects on my because I know it is relatively new. Yes. And thank you so much, Anonymous um, uh, caller, for that question. The bottom line is this. When you work in uh, the field of addiction and or mental health, the first, the first step towards help is simply this. It's called the readiness of the client. It's when the individual is ready to have the effect behavioral change for him or herself. It's about the readiness of the individual. I shared with you a few minutes ago, anonymous caller, that for the most part, we know that 80%, eight out of 10 individuals will relapse within the first 21 uh, days. I've worked with an individual in uh, San Antonio. Uh, she was using uh, vaping products, e cigs and she used it for nine years. It was not until uh, she had a tragedy that she decided that she wanted to have a change in her life. Sometimes there are events, occurrences that will jolt a person back towards a, a sense of reality as well. But it all boils down to simply this, the readiness of the client, the readiness of the individual to say, I need to make a change in my life. All right, I think that is our last question. And I will go through the last slides if you'd like me to, Dr. Hendricks. Second, please. Would you like me to still finish the other slides for you? Oh, that was, just with, the, that was just with the tobacco product as well. I just want, oh. I want to make sure I get to, uh, to questions. OK. Yeah. And I, just, I did want to share some information at the end. Also, if you do, if you would like, I'd love for you to share your um, contact information as well for yeah. everyone. If you notice that, Ms. Maya, on that previous slide there, I do have a lot of resources uh, that individuals can uh, uh, get as well to reach out and uh, to get additional information. But I'll always make myself readily available uh, to help. That's just part of my outreach. Um, I feel as though it's, it's important uh, to do that. I, I, I grew up uh, in Louisiana outside of New Orleans. And, and I saw how uh, the use of alcohol and drugs and so forth impacted individuals. And I will say this to you openly with my few minutes I have left. When I decided that, that I was fortunate enough to go to college and people helped me, I wanted to go into this field of work because I wanted to quote unquote, fix people. Little did I know that I had built up some biases in my own self. And I chose, I made the decision to also to get help, to go to counseling so that I can learn the importance of being empathic towards individuals who are struggling with these uh, addictive disorders. Because as I said to you, when you understand how the brain operates and how the brain works, it's not, it's not that easy. When you know what the research says that we have 5% of the world's population, but 65% of all the addictive disorders, when you find that 80%, eight out of 10 relapse within 21 days, I know that it is not an easy course. We didn't get into this overnight and we won't get out of it overnight. But as long as the individual is putting forth the effort that he or she wants to change, well, we're going to work with them. That's so great. Thank you so much, Dr. Hendricks. Thank all of you so much. Thank you guys so much. And thank you all of the attending attendees. And Dr. Hendricks, if you do want to share your information, I'd love for you to share with everyone currently here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can call my office at 903-886-5632. If it would help, New Wave is 803 or email Lavelle, L A V as in Victory, E L L E dot Hendricks, H E N D R I C K S. Have a long email address. Lavelle dot Hendricks at T A M U C dot E D U. So that's L A V E L L E dot Hendricks, H E N. D R I C K S at T A M U C dot E D U. Thank you. And also, 
Thank you everyone for attending. I also have on the final slide, the Sondermai Community Liaison. So we have liaisons in each of the markets mentioned here and you can contact us um, if you would like further information or if you have any interest that we could assist you with. And once again, thank you for attending. Thank all of you, Jalene, thank you as well.